Good evening, my name is Timothy and I'm gonna be speaking with you today about major depressive disorder. And the description of major depressive disorder is, is that it is a mental disorder. It's characterized by a pervasive and persistent low mood. Uh, it's often accompanied by low self-esteem and by loss of interest or pleasure in normally enjoyable activities that once existed. Uh, major depressive disorder is also a disabling condition. It adversely affects every area of a person's life, whether it's their family life, their work life, their school life, sleeping and eating habits as well, and just overall general health. Uh, major depressive disorder symptoms, there's actually nine of them according to the DSM, and they are depressed mood most of the day. Now, with children, youth, or adolescents, they may display an irritable mood opposed to a depressed mood. Uh, there's also, secondly, markedly diminished interest or pleasure in most, if not all, activities that last most of the day. And third, we have significant weight loss or weight gain. That would be a symptom. And fourthly, there would be insomnia or hypersomnia. That's basically you just cannot sleep uh, or you just cannot stop sleeping. Uh, psychomotor agitation or retardation uh, as well. There is also fatigue or loss of energy. Um, number seven, there's feelings of worthlessness or excessive or inappropriate guilt. Uh, eight, there's diminished ability to think or concentrate or just overall indecisiveness. And nine, reoccurring thoughts of death or reoccurring suicidal thoughts. Now, there's a catch-22 um, with these nine symptoms because out of the nine you need to have five of them and out of the the five that you have one or both of the first two need to be present so once again you need to have one if not both of the first two to even go any further with the diagnosis of major depressive disorder once again Depressed mood most of the day needs to be evident. Nearly every day, as indicated by the subjective report, uh, which would report that you're feeling sad, uh, feeling empty, feeling hopeless, this would be, of course, uh, by licensed physician or licensed therapist, or observation made by others. Uh, he appears to be tearful today, uh, and he appeared to be tearful yesterday and every day last week and actually every day for the past two weeks. Uh, no, once again, in children and adolescents, this could be an irritable mood opposed to a depressed mood. Uh, that second uh, necessary criteria of being one or the other needs to, uh, along with the depressed mood, they need to either or have markedly diminished interest or pleasure in all or almost all activities most of the day, nearly every day, as indicated by either subjective account or observation. Uh, once again, one or both of those first two need to be present. Uh, if the first is present, you only need four more. If those two are present, you only need three more, and they are significant weight loss when not dieting or weight gain, a change of more than 5% of body weight in a month uh, qualifies. Uh, or decrease or increase in appetite nearly every day. Note, once again, in children, consider the failure to make accepted weight gain. Um, for insomnia or hypersomnia nearly every day, once again, you just can't sleep or you just can't stop sleeping. Uh, five, psychomotor agitation or retardation nearly every day, once again, observable by others. It cannot merely be a subjective feeling of restlessness or being slowed down. Uh, six, fatigue or loss of energy nearly every day. Uh, feelings of worthlessness or excessive or inappropriate guilt is number seven. This may be delusional. Nearly every day, not merely self-reproach or guilt about being sick. Uh, eight is diminished ability, once again, to think or concentrate or just overall indecisiveness, as we spoke of. And last but not least, reoccurring thoughts of death. Now, this is not just the fear of dying. Uh, these are just thoughts of death, rather than be suicide. Once again, recurrent suicidal ideation. You're idolizing the fact of suicide without a specific plan, without a, a prior suicide attempt or a specific plan for committing the suicide. So once again, you don't have to have a history of uh, suicidal thoughts or even a history of suicidal attempts uh, for this to take place.
Now, other key factors to recognize are that symptoms cause clinically significant distress or impairment in every area of the individual's life, in the social areas, in the occupational areas, and other important areas of functioning, just in everyday, day-to-day -day life. The occurrence of the major depressive episode is not better explained by any category of schizophrenia. Rather, it's schizoaffective disorder, schizophrenia itself, schizophrenia form disorder, delusional disorder, or other specified or unspecified schizophrenia spectrum and other psychotic disorders. This is not to be confused with that. There has never been a manic episode or a hypomanic episode with major depressive disorder unless the exclusion takes place if that manic-like or hypomanic-like episode was substance induced. In other words, if you're under the influence, if you were high, if you were on cocaine, and that triggered a manic-like or hypomanic-like episode, that would be that would be uh, that would be the exclusion there. Now, just a quick statistical fact: uh, in the United States, is around 3.4 percent of the people with major depression. They die by suicide. 3.4 of the people with major depression, they take their own life. And up to 60% of the people who die by suicide, they had depression or another mood disorder prior to that. So that's something to be very, very, very well aware of, um, especially if it's, uh, you know, existing in a family member or what have you. Um, the prevalence rate of MDD, 12-month prevalence of major depressive disorder in the United States is approximately 7% with marked differences by age groups, such that the prevalence, let's say, in 18 to 29-year-old individuals is three times higher than the prevalence in individuals aged 60 years or older. Females, however, they experience 1.5 to 3 times higher rates than males beginning in early, early adolescence. Major depressive disorder may first appear at any age, but the likelihood of onset increases markedly with puberty. In the United States, incidence appears to peak in the 20s. However, first onset in late life is not uncommon. Differential diagnosis. It's not to be confused with manic episodes with the irritable mood or mixed episodes. It's not to be confused with mood disorder due to another medical condition, substance medication induced depressive or bipolar disorder, attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, or what we know better as ADHD, uh, adjustment disorder with depressed mood or sadness. These are differential diagnoses. Uh, so we need to be aware of that when, uh, when, when it comes to major depressive disorder. Common treatment approaches to MDD, uh, there are many approaches, medically wise of, or, or medication treatment wise, uh, SSRIs are popular, that's selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, uh, doctors often start by prescribing SSRIs, these medications are safer and generally cause fewer side effects than the other type of antidepressants, like the old antidepressants, the tricyclics, which are still used, uh, but just not as much. Uh, there's also serotonin, uh, norepinephrine uh, reuptake inhibitors, uh, which are dual, and that's SNRIs. Um, more common is psychotherapy that consists of cognitive behavior therapy or interpersonal therapy, and that's to help the individual with their process of thinking. There's also ECT, which is a uh, last result, uh, and that is actually electrical currents that are passed through the brain. Uh, it is performed under anesthesia. Uh, this procedure is thought to impact the function and affect the neurotransmitters in the brain and typically offers immediate relief of even severe depression when other treatments just simply don't work. Major depressive disorder is definitely something that we need to uh, focus on and give our attention to. Um, and if you know uh, of anyone that suffers from a major depressive disorder, you need to contact the proper people immediately. Uh, thank you for sharing this time with me. My name is Timothy C. Bloom. Um, this is brought to you on behalf of my school, Los Angeles City College, on behalf of uh, my class, which is Fundamentals of Abnormal Psychology. 
Psychology 14 with the great Professor David M. Seji. Uh, if you need more information on major depressive disorder, this is the book you need to get right here.